Today I got one word for you, and that is Greek karidopita. Thank you for asking. Karidopita is the Greek walnut cake, all bathed and delicious with a syrup, and it's made all over Greece. Happy, mad, sad, or glad? This is what they make, and I'm going to show you how to make that right now. <music> So welcome back to another episode of The Lazy Gourmet and My Kitchen. Today I want to show you, like I was telling you before, a simple recipe for traditional Greek karidopita. This recipe is goes back generations and it's something that Greeks make throughout Greece and it's weddings, baptisms, engagements, birthdays, name days, you name it, they make it. And with only a few simple ingredients, it's a hit. The only people really that don't like this are, sadly, my friends have nut allergies because there's walnuts in this. Other than that, it is the bomb. So, first things first, to get us started, what we're going to do is we're going to add three quarters of a cup of softened butter. Softened being the word because believe me, it's going to be a pain in the you know what trying to work with hardened butter. So just drop down your mixer and one and a half cups of sugar. So that goes into our mixer, ready to go. Lock it up and start at the lowest speed or one of the lowest speeds and just whip that up for a little bit and combine it. By the way, at this point, not actually by the way, but at this point, a good idea would be to preheat your oven 350 degrees Fahrenheit or about 180 degrees Celsius get that done, dusted, and out of the way, and that way we can focus on this, which isn't too complicated to begin with. You may want to stop your mixer at some point and quickly scrape off the sides of your bowl, and that way any parts of the butter that haven't incorporated will incorporate into your sugar and make everything all nice and go smoothly. So now, the next part of this is we add our five eggs. I would crack my eggs in another bowl only because the texture we want will come from walnuts and not from eggshells. So now as our mixer is working, we drop it down to the lowest speed. Believe me, you will thank me later. And just throw in your five eggs, just like that. Let that all incorporate in there. Let that kind of mix with the butter before you want to start actually juicing it up because I promise you, if you don't, you're gonna have like scrambled eggs all over your walls. Once again, I want to real quick take my spatula and real easy just move it around the bowl, scraping and cleaning the side of your bowl. Remember, anything that sticks won't get incorporated in your batter, so we want to keep that to an absolute minimum. The next part of this is we take three quarter cups of warmed up milk, and that's key here, is warmed up milk, and we take three teaspoons of baking powder and combine that into our warm milk plus one teaspoon of baking soda and that goes in there. What's going to wind up happening is as I stir this now there will be a chemical reaction and it's going to start to actually froth on you. And look at this, this is what's happening now. So at this stage of the game, as this thing is frosting now, frothing, not frosting, lower your speed, and there's a little bit of coordination, and slowly start incorporating this, actually what the hell, I'm going to turn this off and bring this up, and start adding this into our batter. This is what's actually going to make our karidopita really light, you're going to love this. And it's a nice light dessert, and this is the trick to this. So, in goes our frothy milk because of the baking soda and baking powder. I love these little tricks, like these ladies show me this stuff. It's like they love, it's like they adopt me. So, this goes in, again, lock it up, nice and slowly, 
get that all beating and incorporating. Kick that up another notch, let it go. Now at this stage of the game, the only thing that's left is our cinnamon, our flour, and of course our chopped walnuts. So far so good, right? Nothing to this at all. The next part of this, we're gonna take one teaspoon of ground cinnamon, and that will go in there. Perfect. A lot of Greek cakes and desserts incorporate actually cinnamon in them, so this is no exception. Now I'm starting to get that, that kind of Greek cake vibe here. And one and a half cups of all-purpose flour. So this, I'm just going to bring down again, especially this part here. And this slowly, start adding this. And try to be as graceful as you can. Perfect. And our flour goes in there. So we got pretty much our entire batter ready to go. Some people at this stage when they add their walnuts will also add raisins. You can do that if you want. I don't. I'm keeping this pretty much traditional. So at this point, let this go for a couple of minutes. Let it all incorporate along the flour and everything else like our wet and our dry ingredients. And from there, once this is ready, we're gonna scrape off our bowl and add our walnuts. All right, so our batter is pretty much ready to go. The last part, and one of the most important, are the caridia, or the walnuts. Hence, caridopita, walnut cake. There you go. So this is gonna go in now, perfect. Our walnuts are in. Like we said, a cup of walnuts. And bring that up. Get everything all nice and incorporated, and we're just about ready to bake this off. And voila, our cake is ready to go. So now, just clean off your beater a little bit here, and get that going. Nice and clean there, perfect. Awesome. And take my bowl out of here. So very simply, add your batter to our pan. And for this, by the way, I'm using a 12 inch roasting pan or baking pan. All right, perfect, just like that. So spread your batter around very simply. And just, let me just put that there. And make it as even as you can. This will rise on you as well through the baking process. And for this, very simply, 350 degrees like we were saying for about 30 minutes 30 to 45 minutes check it give it the toothpick test make sure that it's all done and ready kind of inside and dry and cook so after it bakes it's gonna have to cool and then what we're gonna do is add our syrup and that's the other yummy factor in this it's drenched in this beautiful uh, lemon uh, simple syrup it's absolutely fantastic and it adds to the flavor and I'm going to show you how to do that right after we pop this in the oven all right so now the next part of this is the simple syrup and it's exactly that very simple for this it's two cups water two cups sugar the rind of one lemon that's gonna go in and one cinnamon stick. So, without delay, two cups go in. Really complicated. Two cups of sugar go in. Now we're getting crazy. One cinnamon stick gets dropped in. And get a peeler and just peel off the zest or the outer skin. Don't get that white part that's really bitter. Just the outer part of the lemon. Nice and easy. See that? Nothing to this at all. And just go around. Would you look at that? So, goes around just like that. And you're just going to basically bring this to a boil. That's it. Simmer this for like two, three, four minutes. 
and then just let it cool all together with the cinnamon and the um, lemon zest all in there and let all the flavors kind of marry and incorporate before we actually add it back into our cooled cake. Now as the water is heating up and coming to a boil, all the aromatics are being released from the cinnamon and the lemon rind. Oh, it's fantastic. So now that our syrup is ready to go, it's done. All we have to do now is just leave it alone, set it off to the side, let it cool, and once our cake is out of the oven and cooled as well, we combine the two and create something that's amazing. See you in a bit. So now, as my dad says, do that. The cake has been done for now about an hour and a half or so. It's cooled down sufficiently, so you don't want it to be too hot at this point. And our syrup has been sitting. So now, just real quick, I'm just gonna take the lemon rind and the cinnamon, stick out of the syrup. Okay, so the next part of this is we take something to poke holes in this. And look, imagine this, a souvlaki stick at my house. I've made this recipe before or a similar recipe without poking the holes in it, but the lady in black that showed me how to do this insisted that this is the only way. So the whole thing of this is that you want to poke the holes so the syrup gets a chance to permeate into the actual sponge part of the cake. You don't want to stab it like it cheated on you. It's just something very, very simple. And slowly start pouring the syrup over this, all over our cake. This is actually very syrupy, so don't be alarmed or worry if there's, wow, there's like a lot of syrup in this, what's gonna happen, what am I gonna do? The cake will absorb it. And the other thing as well, as the syrup gets absorbed, it will, actually I'm gonna put this down for I stab myself, but the cake will actually absorb it. So as you cut it, you're gonna find that the bottom portion of the cake is really syrupy. Simple, just like that. There's like literally nothing to this. Now, what we do is, very simply, just leave our caridopita or our Greek walnut cake off just to kind of sit and collect itself and be happy with the syrup. Now, at this point, we're just gonna leave this now for another maybe 15 minutes, half an hour, let it all settle, and you can go ahead and you can cut it. I will tell you this insider tip, vanilla ice cream or vanilla frozen yogurt, have a piece of this or a slab of this, plus a scoop or three or four of vanilla ice cream and it is gonna be one of the most ultimate desserts you've ever seen. So that's it for this episode on the Greek caridopita or the Greek walnut cake, all drowned and baptized in luscious syrup. So I hope you enjoyed this episode. I had a blast making this. I can tell you I'm gonna have an even bigger blast eating this with my dear friends. So until next time, please hit the like button Remember to subscribe, and as always, thank you very much for watching. Bye for now.